Right. For so, thank you for introduction, and then thank you for the opportunity to give a talk here. So, title is Russian curves on surface surfaces in positive characteristic. So, with uh, mainly Brian, I have been studying like uh, Russian curves on phantom varieties in characteristic zero, and then today I'd like to talk about. What happens if we consider rational curves on phantom varieties in positive characteristic? And then, so I, it's okay. So this is talk about rational curve, but uh, I mean, so I will mention some implication to rational points of a global function field as well. So I think it's related to also like rational points. And then, so this is the joint work with Roy IPHT, Brian Lema, and Eric Reader. And then, uh, so one question, this is still work in progress. I think uh, it's becoming stable now, but uh, like every time we saw we finish a paper, then we find a counter example and we repeat this process. So like classic P is really tricky and then it's new to us. So yeah, I mean, final version may be slightly different from what I talked today, but anyway. So now then let me start, uh, okay. So introduction, preliminaries. So now let S be a weak surface surface of our final field K. So that means that uh, S is a smooth projective surface uh, such that minus KS is big and NEF. So NEF means that uh, negative uh, intersection against any curve is non-negative. And then big means that it can be expressed as like a sum of ample divisor plus effective divisor. So that's the meaning of NEF and big. And then, I mean, if you don't know about this terminology, then you can assume minus KS is ample. Uh, but uh, some interesting, interest, interesting things can happen when minus KS is big and NEF, but not ample. So, probably we should also allow to uh, minus k has to be big and f. And then of course, famous examples, our favorite examples are smooth cubic surfaces in K3. This is like a, so smooth surface surface. And then in this case, minus k is ample. Now, what's money? So I studied like a money connection by finite fields. And then, so this is Condition ask like how many rational curves of anti can degree less than equal t defined by k we have on S. So what does it mean? So let me uh, make this question more precise. So let morphism p1 to S. This is a scheme parameterizing morphism from p1 to S. So this is a scheme, and but uh, it's not major. Yeah? So there can't be any components, and then. Uh, let you be the Zariski open subset of S. And then I'm going to denote more U, uh, sub U, P1S, to be a uh, space of morphism from P1 to S, such that image meets with U. Okay? So open, meet with open set. And then now N1X, this is like a space of one cycles. So we consider like a free linear subspace generated by curves, and then we, we quotient by like a numerical equivalence. And then let alpha be an integral effective one cycle. Then I'm going to define like a model U P1 as alpha. This is like a, so um, morphism from P1 to S meeting U, and then fundamental class like a, uh, is alpha. So, uh, uh, so like this cycle is alpha. And then, I mean, if I specify alpha, then this becomes a scheme of a finite type of a K. So, uh, well, so it may not be reduced, but uh, anyway, it's a scheme. And then, uh, so they take that, they get any irreducible component of this uh, scheme. And then when I take irreducible component, I always end up with like a reduced scheme structure. So this is variety. Then uh, in this case, like a dimension M, is greater than minus ks dot alpha plus two. So, and this lower this lower bound is always two, and this lower bound is called like uh, expected dimension of a moduli space, uh, morphism space, morphism scheme of S. So that's the uh, basic thing, 
And then now, so what's Marin Konica does? So now we look at like effective cycles, cone of effective one cycles inside of this uh, space of one cycles, modular numeric equivalence. And then we define the following counting function. So we look at the effective cycle and the anti current degree is less than equal to D. And then we look at this morphism scheme and the K is a finite field. So this number is really a finite set. This set is a finite set. And then we count number of points on this scheme. So this is like counting rational curves uh, on S defined over K. So that's the kind of idea. And then meeting with you. And then in his published notes from 1988, Bartlett developed like a heuristic to obtain, I think, a formula for discounting a function. So this heuristic is very important. So I mean, so I asked Bartlett, I mean, whether there's any difference for this. And he told me that there's a handwritten note by him. He prepared for lecture in Berlin. And then that, that's the only source he prepared. But then, then now there's account by Yuri Jinker or like a deputy Buki. I mean, there are a bunch of uh, uh, like survey papers explaining this heuristic. But any anyway, original source is uh, uh, Batlev's uh, handwritten note from 1988. And then, so yeah. So now I like to count this guy. So Batlev gave a heuristic for this counting function. Uh, this is a beautiful heuristic. Uh, but it uh, depends on some assumptions on morphism scheme. So now let NEF1S to be the NEF comb one cycles. And then first, but if I assume that there exists some Zariski open subset U such that, oops, any rational curve meeting with U deform to a free rational curve from C to S. So what, what does free mean? So free means that now, pullback of a tangent uh, bundle. So this is like a rank two shift on P1. And then this can be expressed like OA1 plus OA2. So it can be expressed as direct sum of line bundles because this is over P1. And they could mean that each component is non-negative. Like A1 and A2, those are non-negative. That's the free means. So if this assumption is true, then, for any effective one cycle, which is not NEF, first of all, this morphism scheme is empty set. You can prove that. Moreover, if you have any NEF class, and if this is no empty, then there's some component. Then dimension component is given by expect dimension. So this is very nice. Now we understand dimension. So we assume that we understand dimension. And then also, but assume that uh, for any NEF class, this scheme is no, uh, this scheme is no empty and irreducible. Yeah. So this is like a two assumption. And then one more assumption. So now this scheme is irreducible and dimension is given by this expect dimension. So naively, you may guess that number of points on uh, this uh, uh, scheme is something like uh, this number. So this is exactly uh, the number of uh, number of affine space of a dimension given by exact dimension. And then, so let's hope that, I mean, this is really like this. And then, or, so I should mention that uh, Jordan Ellenberg and actually Bengt suggested that one can achieve this like a uh, uh, kind of approximation com by combining some homological stability result with the uh, gluten refugee stress formula. Yeah. Then, if we assume those assumptions, then this is equal to uh, like uh, this counting function we consider. But then, so now we can restrict to NEF because the outside of NEF, this is empty. And then we restrict to NEF. And then now we consider like uh, this is approximate by this number. So we can replace by this guy. And then one can prove that this has like a simple formula of Q to the D times d to the low s minus one, where low s is some Picard rank of s. So this is a battery of the heuristic, and then explain why like uh, a simple formula should be like this. All right, and then, so basically like a geometric money conjecture, so I'm proposing it with Brian, 
uh, this is some kind. So unfortunately, these assumptions are not true in general. So you need some like a uh, refinement, and then so geometric manifold provides like uh, some refinement for first two assumptions. So dimension and irreducibility. All right. And then, so this is the reason like, uh, why we, we are interested in like a uh, modular space uh, of uh, rational curves. And then, but uh, in my talk, I no longer work on morphism scheme. I like to work on cosmodular space of stable maps of genus zero on S. So this is a space parameterizing a morphism from three of rational curves to S. And then in general, it's difficult to understand this space because some component may genetically parameterize reducible curves. So instead, we are interested in the union, that bias. So this is the union of a component of M bar zero zero S genetically parameterizing stable maps from this domain, that means P1. So this is like a becoming like a, a compatification of space version. But then I should warn you that for any component M, now, Extreme dimension is given by this number. This is because for morphism scheme, different and um, PGL2 action, we count PGL2 action. That means if we decompose with PGL2 action of P1, then uh, we distinguish them. But here for modular space or stable map, we take like isomorphism classes. So this is really like a, a so dimension gets. So originally they got expected dimension for morphism scheme is given by this number, but now we get uh, down by three because of PGL2 action. Anyway, so for, for me, expected dimension is this number. Okay. Now, okay. So, so far, do you have any question? Okay. So then what shall we ask about this modular space? Since now we are interested in money in the conjecture, we should ask for each component of rat bias, what's the dimension n? Does it coincide with the express dimension? Also, what's the number of component parameterizing rational curves of anti cannot anti can degree less than D? Can we say something about asymptotics? And the answer to this question leads to application of money in the conjecture. And then so now today's talk, we are interested in the Dribbet surfaces. And uh, Damiano Testa addressed these questions for Dirpet surfaces in Chasisk Zero. So he basically proved like the visibility of modular space and it does expect mention. He proved it. Now, so what about Chasisk P? That's the motivation of today's talk. Now, so let me introduce some Fujita invariant. So this plays central role in Manning's conjecture. So I'm going to define Fujita invariant. But uh, I, so I like to define over by arbitrary free. So I'm going to assume a dimension is less than three. So now let X be a smooth project variety of dimension less than equal three over algebraic closed field K. And let L be a big nef Q card divisor on X. Then Fujita invariant or A invariant of XL is this AXL to be the minimum of T such that TL plus KX is pseudo effective. Where and so pseudo effective so this is like a comb effective so the closure of comb effective divisors. So this kind of, so that means that TL plus KX is a limit of effective comb inside the neural subject space. And then uh, that shows that this is a positive if and only if there exists some dominant family of rational curves C on X such that KX dot C is negative. So this is true even in positive characteristics. Uh, in any dimension. And also when it is not big, then we set A to be infinity, okay? And then also like, I like to define this invariant for singular variety. So what we do is when X is singular, we define this invariant by putting back to smooth resolution. But this is a place where we need the dimension is less than equal to three. So if the variety had dimension less than equal to three, they admit it's smooth resolution. So uh, you can take a resolution and then define a invariant with a pullback of a invariant, uh, a invariant, a invariant and pullback. And then this is very defined because the XL is a bilateral invariant and so on, so on. So this is a very nice, all right. Now, 
invariant play central role in Manning's conjecture. So this is a weak Manning's conjecture over number field. So let x be a unilateral smooth project variety over number field k, and L be a big neft divisor. And suppose we have like a height function associated to L, and then there exists some Zariski open subset U such that counting function. So number of rational points on U such that height is bounded by T. This counting function is bounded by T to the A plus epsilon. So this is the weak Manning's conjecture. And what like a, some, some people call like a linear growth conjecture or something like that for like anti kind of graphs. But anyway, so this is a, a weak Manning's conjecture. All right. And then let me give you some positive evidence for this uh, conjecture. So this is a theorem by Hakon Jam. So let X be a smooth unitary project variety of algebraic growth field of category zero. So you can assume this is like a funnel variety or something like that. And L be a big NFQ divisor on X. And let V be the union of sub variety Y such that AYL is bigger than AXL. Then V is a proper growth subset. So, I mean, so if y satisfy this inequality, then well, you may guess that I think the formula for y is greater than I think the formula for x. So you need to remove this contribution from y. And if I take a union of this, is this proper cross subset? I mean, that's the question. Because I mean, here we are taking this is a Zariski open subset, okay? So it needs to be proper cross subset here. And it, it's, it is indeed proper cross subset, one can prove. And a proof uses like a bounded, boundedness of singular final varieties and BAB conjecture approved by Bilka in an essential way. So this is some positive evidence uh, for weak money conjecture or a number field. Now, also we have a foreign theorem. So let a, Y to X be a genetically finite dominant morphism between smooth project variety in cash zero. And let L be a big enough Q divisor the invariant of y is always less than equal to invariant x. So this follows from like a ramification formula. Okay. All right. So these are kind of situation in cash is zero. And using these, one can prove the following. Assume cash is zero and let x be a smooth weak final variety. That means minus kx is big and map. And then take the union of y such that ay minus kx is greater than x minus kx, which is one. So this is a proper cross subset by the like, Hay conjunct theorem. Then any component parameterizing non-dominant family of rational curves will parameterize rational curves containing B. In particular, any component N parameterizing rational curves outside of B is dominant component generically parameterizing free rational curves and has dimension equal to expect dimension. So, so in particular, this shows that in Kashyyyk zero, but is a fast assumption heuristic on, this is like a assumption dimension. And then the, this is assumption is true in Kashyyyk zero, okay? So this is very nice. Now, what about the Kashyyyk P? So that's the, uh, so I'm going to talk about it. But so far, do you have any question? OK. Then, but in case of the uh, situation is more complicated. So now let me give you one pathology, pathological example. Uh, this is, uh, so let k to be f3, and then consider the pencil of cubics, following cubics, uh, pencil of cubics. And then one can show that if you grow up eight points of a base locus, so this is a pencil of cubics, so the base locus is nine points. And then you can find one rational point out in, among them. So no, in remaining uh, eight points is conjugate. So you grow up eight points then you get weak therapeutic surface of degree one, okay? So this is a weak therapeutic surface of degree one. But now realize that for any ST, this is a cuspital rational curve, okay? This is equation for any S and T, 
This cubic has less singular point, even S is smooth. So if you blow up the base, so this pencil, so this linear system of anti-canonical anti system is like a pencilable cubics. And if you blow up a base point, then this uh, pullback defines a quasi-elliptic vibration. So S tilde is smooth, but general fiber is singular, and then capital rational gap. And then they have like a Manchikano degree one. Now to construct component or modulus for stable mass. So, so these are like a bit, uh, so curves are singular. So I like to de-singularize, uh, like take a resolution for each curve. But you can take this re resolution only after taking purely inseparable base change by Hulot venues. This is because like a genetic fiber, this is a cusp taroka, and a cusp is like a Galois invariant point. But it's not rational points. I think a piece the like cubic uh, root is not uh, is not like a doesn't exist, and so capital point is not a rational point. So you can't desingularize over the base. So you need to take like a base change, pro, pro, is separable base change, and then you get like a surface y, and then this is gives like a genetic smooth, and then. I mean, after base change, you can desingularize general fiber. So you can have a genetic smoothing. And then you get like an honest vibration, P1 vibration over B prime, whose genetic fiber is uh, so isomorphic to P1 over the ground field. Now, we take a base change when we walk over K function field. So now let me walk on the function field. And let's see K with the general rational, general rational. Uh, the, oh, oh, general, sorry, general rational fiber of rho k on this y, then since anti degree of this curve is one, A invariant is two, but A invariant here is one. And then moreover, CK is isomorphic to P1. In particular, I think the formula for CK is like a Q to the 2D. Thus, we need to remove the set of, set of rational points at scale in, your, in order to obtain desired growth, growth rate for rational points on genetic fiber. That means like a C times Q to the D times G to the rho S minus one. So external set for weak manage conjecture can be Zariski then. This is totally different from calculus zero. In calculus zero, we have this uh, the Hakon Jan theorem. So this that never happened, but in calculus P, it can happen. And then so. And then, but to realize that now these fibers, like a rational points, uh, these are like a, a rational curves, or fact, uh, so note that these rational points we must remove will be contain a thin subset of points on SK coming from this cover. So still like a thin, as a, we, so here we need, really need to remove a thin set, okay? So yeah, so yeah, we, we, we knew this example for a long time, but uh, we never finish Cascade P paper, but anyway. But uh, there's another pathological example. All right, so now next example, now over F2, we will recall example of surface by Cassini Tanaka. So uh, they constructed a weak to the best surface of degree two, which doesn't satisfy Kaumata feedback vanishing theorem. So, uh, so this is a study by the bilateral geometers because of a minimal model program, but anyway. So now let's consider P P two. Now over F two, we have a seven F two points. Is that number of F two points is seven? We drop all of them. Now we obtain weak to the surface of S over degree two. Now Cassini and Tanaka shows that minus two curves on S will be precisely the the pre transfer of seven F two lines on P two. So now each line has like three points. We draw up, we get minus two curves. And then in this way, you get like a seven, uh, eight minus two, uh, minus two cap. Then they show that this linear system. So this defines double cap at P2, but this is inseparable, purely inseparable degree two map. This never happened for delpet surface. This, if delpet surface and this purely inseparable cover is, it, uh, uh, so this double cover is it purely inseparable, then it must be singular. But for weak delpet surface, it can happen. It can be purely inseparable degree two map to P2. And then this map factors through the anti canonical model S prime, which have seven A1 singularities. By the way, this seven A1 singularities, this that, such a like a this kind of type of uh, 
Derivative surface doesn't exist. Weak derivative surface doesn't exist in case of zero. There's no weak derivative surface of degree two with seven A1 singularities. So this is a really like something uh, positive characteristic thing. Now let double square equal to F4. Uh, this is like a, so now let this double square equal F4 is a defining equation S prime inside a weighted projective space, where F4 is a homogeneous polynomial of degree four. By construction, F4 has coefficient in F2. Now consider the following map, STU mapping to X, Y, Z, W, mapping S square, T square, U square, F4, STU. Then from this map, factor through this map, P2 to S prime. So minus KX is a pullback of O1, and uh, this is like a projection, double cover. So pullback of minus KX to P2 is O2, because the flow is multiply two. Now, anti linear system on P, uh, the anti divisor on P3 is O3. That means A invariant is three over two which is varied A invariant for big the best surface is always one. So again, working over the, this function field, actually set for SK must contain direct then subset of this cover. So this is a thin set. Okay, so this kind of like a surprising example, to me, it's really surprising. Like a, yeah, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, and then, so we classify these like a breaking maps. So now, suppose we have a weak the surface of degree D, let Y to S be a dominant generic finite monomorphism such that A invariant is still greater than A invariant. We call this as a breaking map. Now, then, uh, so we have like a four types, four types of a breaking map. So first case, characteristic is a two and three, and the D is equal to one. So the weak to the surface of degree one, and then Ithaca dimension of this adjoint divisor is one, and the push forward of general fiber with Ithaca vibration satisfy this. In particular, in this case, A is two, and C is a member of quadratic vibration, minus case. So, uh, so this is the exact example we saw in the first example. This is pathological example one. So that's the first classification. Next, case K is equal to, D is equal to, F is a birational equivalent to purely inseparable map, infinite map of degree two from P2 to the anti model of S. And in this case, A invariant is three over two, and then this double cover, this linear system defines the double cover, and this defines inseparable map. All right, so that's the second example, but we still have more examples, actually. So K is two, and D is equal to one, F is birational equivalent to purely inseparable double cover from a quadratic cone to anti model of S. And the AY F minus F star case is equal to two. And this linear system defines uh, double cover to quadratic cone, and this defines inseparable map. And then, uh, then also like uh, we have a classic K equal two and D is equal to one. And the F is birational equivalent to like a non-separable map of degree four from P2 to the anti model of S. In this case, A invariant is three over two, and this defines the inseparable map. Okay, here's the quotation mark. We need to still, we still need to check something. We are uh, verifying this, but anyway, I think that we, we, we are almost sure that this is true. But anyway, so this quotation, quotation mark means that some, some minor checking is necessary. We are working on it. Now, so these four times, or, uh, so first of all, like, uh, when S is the best surface, no of one to four can occur. So no, there's no breaking map. But for weak derivative, it can have a breaking map. So yeah, this is a really like, a phenomena for weak derivative surface. And we found all examples, uh, examples for all situations. And actually, so three and four, and mm -hmm. the, I, I didn't verify, but I'm, so, if it's three and four, then one can prove that one is true. So they can, it becomes situation one. And then I, we have almost a proof that one also implies three and four. So I think one, three, four, actually same derivative surface of degree one. And then at University of Tokyo, there are two graduate students. Uh, they classify these uh, surfaces, uh, Kawakami and Nagaoka. So, their motivations are different. They uh, classify the like, derivative surface, which don't satisfy the like, Kawakami feedback vanishing in theorem, 
also unscanning system doesn't satisfy the routine is theorem. And also like uh, there's no log lifting. And so we they they classify like a uh, those like a uh, pathological uh pathological like a uh, big driven surfaces. And then so they even give like a uh, explicit equation for some of them. So these are pretty well understood. But then so and this so basically like, uh, we have a like, complete classification, almost like complete classification of those surfaces. Okay. So that's the that, uh, one thing. So, and then let me mention one thing. So if you have a like, smooth weak funnel variety defined over K and the edit anti kind of class, and why is the breaking map from a smooth project variety? Suppose we have a dominant component N parameterizing rational curves C2Y such that uh, this is uh, true, like this is equal to zero. Then family of rational, then composed to X. And then this family of rational curve has dimension higher than expected dimension. And then, so in particular, all examples we mentioned, you can cook, cook up with like this kind of curve satisfying this condition. You can already find it. So in particular, you can find a component whose dimension is higher than expected dimension. So battery heuristic, fast, even fast assumption battery heuristic phase. And then, so now let me prove uh, this uh, proportion. This is easy. So suppose we have a, a rational curve on Y, then dimension is given by like a, so there's already a lower bound like this. And but then we have this inequality and the A invariant is 60 greater than one. So we have a dimension greater than expected dimension, 60 greater than expected dimension. That's it. That's the proof. Okay. So that's the pathological examples uh, you should keep in mind. And then, uh, yeah, so this uh, strange thing can happen. Right. Any question? All right. So then, uh, now I like to, but for the reverse sources, we hope that we can prove like a analogous of a tester. So that's what we do next. So now our proof is based on induction. So first we need to develop, uh, analyze low degree rational curves, the conics and the cubics. And then we also need to analyze like, uh, and then we apply like a bend and break and then up and like a perform like an induct inductive proofs. Now, uh, so this is a quotation mark. We, so this is the part we need to, we need some checking, uh, but anyway, so that, that there should be a weak to the surface of degree D over K. And when D is equal to two, we assume that S is not following the expression. So K six to K is not equal to two and the minus K is anti class defined purely in purely in separable genetically finite map. So we don't assume this happens. So, we are not in this situation. When D is equal to one, we assume that classic, uh, we are, S is not following exception. So classic K is equal to two and three and general member of anti system is singular. So we avoid this situation because we know that in this situation, the other the component with the dimension is higher than expected dimension. Now avoiding this situation, then we can prove component parametering family of bilateral maps to curve C with anti disease less than equal three, then M has extra dimension unless C is minus two cap. So in this case, in the case of minus two cap, extra dimension is negative. So it can never be equal to actual dimension. So for C reason, we need to exclude. But the other guess is it's equal to the extra dimension. All right. All right. And then also now next, we like to use like a, uh, freeness. So we like to prove like a curves are free, dominant components are free. What's just like what's something like about the hope? And then to do this, we need to analyze like separability of uh, rational curves, like freeness of rational curves, or of low degree low degree curves. So assume like S is a derivative surface of degree T, and then I'm going to assume that when D is equal to one. Classic K is greater than equal to zero. Yeah, this is unfortunate. It's kind of rather large, but I think I don't know. We don't. I don't wanna. We don't wanna handle like uh, analyze like a uh, low degree rational curves or degree one surfaces. 
So we have some different general argument and then that requires like a classic K is greater than or equal to 11. Anyway, so now M is a component parametering dominant family of curve C such as minus K S dot C is less than equal C. When D is equal to three, we assume that S is not following expression. So I, K, K is a two and S is a Feynman cubic. So we need to avoid this case. When D is equal to two, we assume that S is not for one with the following expression. So K is equal to three and S is a double cover P of P2 ramified around this like a cortic. This is smooth cortic and then we, uh, this double cover is a problematic. And then case K is equal to S is double cover P2 defined by this equation. So this case is a separable. So this equation means it's separable because we have wy square. So this term means it's separable. It's separable. Case K is equal to two and S is a blow up of Fermi-Curie. Also, we need to avoid this. If we can prove this, then M parameter is separable family of curves. That means that you look at the universal family of curves and then uh, look at the like, uh, evaluation map, then this is a separable. So in other words, you can assume that the general curve is free. Okay, so uh, I'm not gonna give a proof of this theorem, but rather let me explain why those examples need to be excluded. So Fermat cubic, uh, rational curves in minus case are parameter by dual variety. Okay, because uh, rational curves are singular tangent, uh, uh, it's cut out by tangent, tangent plane. So it's a singular rational curves and cut out a tangent plane. So it's a uh, parameter dual variety. In this case, in case two, Gauss map is purely inseparable. And then general tangent plane cuts out a capital rational curve. And then if you define like a normalization like this, then normal shift because of a cast, normal shift looks like this. And then, so in cases greater than equal to three, if you have a cast, then length of a torsion part is one. But in case two, length is two, so we get an O minus one. In this way, like uh, uh, we have like a strange thing. And then in this case, like, uh, so uh, yeah, so because of this O minus one, you can prove that prove a tangent shift, tangent bundle is also not positive. So this this part becomes like a, I mean, this part shows up in tangent shift. And then, so torsion part is supporting your cusp. And then anyway, so in this way, like you see like a, a, this curve is not free. So it's not separable. So yeah, we didn't realize that like a, to, for cusp in cash two, like a length of torsion part is uh, uh, two. So originally we had a very, uh, we had like a very clean statement for everything. But then we realized this sub authority in case two and then like everything we found many counter example. Yeah, anyway. So it's kind of like a strange thing is happening, yeah. All right, also let me explain this example. Case is a three and double cover P2 ramify this equation. And rational member of this guy is parameter of a dual curve again. And the gas map is again purely inseparable. This means that every tangent line has a flex. That means that uh, like a, order of tangency is like a three, not two. So this means that general member of this anti member is again capital. In this case, this is the classic three. And then, so that means that torsion part is one, but since this is conic, this is O minus one. So again, uh, this is not free. Okay. So anyway, so you can conclude that it's not free. And then other cases like a uh, experience study shows that it's free. Now, finally, uh, let me explain like uh, uh, one result which is needed later. So I'm going to assume the following. When D is greater than equal to four, it's two. When D is equal to two and three, it's three. And 11, D is equal to one. Now, suppose that we have weak repair surface of degree T o D over K with the classic K is equal to P. And then I'm, go oh, I'm going to assume that P is greater than equal to this function, delta function. And also I need to assume that when D is equal to two and P is equal to three, S is the derivative surface, which is not listed in theorem on separability. Then any dominant family of rational curves on S of antiquan degree less than three 
contains free rational curves. In particular, any dominant component parameter in rational curves at a degree less than equals three is separable, so that it has expected energy. So, uh, so this is the reason for degree one repetition. We need eleven. This is the theorem we need. And a proof is based on like a deformation of several rational curves developed by Ito Itorike. So we use their like technologies. Yeah. All right. So now, okay, geometric manning conjecture. So now I'm going to explain how to perform like an inductive proof. So let so now I'm going to introduce like a bend and break. So let this be a weak level surface of, over K and fix a positive integer D greater than or equal to four. Assume that every component of that by is parameterizing dominant family of bilational maps with degree strictly less than D has expected dimension, M bar. And then M bar, let the M bar be a component parameterizing dominant family of bilational maps of degree D with dimension R is equal to dimension M. And I fix R minus one general points. Then there exists some stable map Z to X whose image contains these R minus one general point. And then, uh, and then this has like two components, Z1, Z2, such that restriction of F to Z1, Z2 or general members in moduli in lower, lower anti kanakan degree. Furthermore, if S is its repeat surface, then we can ensure that Z1, Z2 are only component of Z. So this is like a bend and break. So basically, like we look at the like uh, rational curves in A passing through these R minus one general point, and then they form like a one parameter family. And then we apply like a, like a bend and break. And then we find a like, uh, breaking curve with this property. So this is like a, a use of Mori's bend and break. Anyway, and then using this, one can prove the following. Let this be a weak triple surface over K, and assume that every dominant component of that bar S parameterizing rational curve on S over anti degree less than three has expected dimension. Then uh, any component parameterizing dominant family of bilateral map, uh, so let M bar be the any component parameterizing dominant family of bilateral map, then M bar has expected dimension. Okay, so we are going to prove this using induction. So let me explain. We prove this statement using induction on the anti kanakan degree, base case when minus case dot C is less than equal to three is true by assumption. So we assume that for anti kanakan degree less than equal to three, they have exit dimension. So that's the assumption. And then I assume anti kanakan degree is greater than equal to four and R is the dimension of M. By abandoned brain, we find a stable map parameter by M with the residual domain through R minus one general points of S. By lemma, do, there are two curves C1, C2 in the image of F, which they form in dominant family. Now, so, so C1, C2, let, uh, they have like, a, a, their degrees are D1 and D2, D1 and D2. Then their expect, modular space of parameter C1 and C2, they have a fifth dimension, D1 minus one and D2 minus one. From this, one can conclude that C1 and C2 can at most contain D, uh, so C1 can at most contain D, D1 minus one. So, so, D, so C1 can contain at most D1 minus one general point, and C2 can contain at most D2 minus one general point. That means that now R minus one, so breaking curve contains like R, minus, uh, R minus one general point. So this number needs to be greater than this guy. You can prove this. And then you have this. And then this, and then you can conclude that it's equal. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that proof. So that's the inductive proof, and the proof that R is equal to expected dimension. Also, we have if we, are, we have a separability. So now let the S be a weak triple surface degree. Uh, so the other corollary we have the uh, so expected dimension. So as a corollary, suppose we have this exchange, we are not in the, this external case. So suppose we have weak triple surface and dominant component parameterizing by Russian stable maps. And the classic case, uh, so I'm going to avoid this situation, like I mentioned before. 
then M has expected range of one can prove it. Okay, so this is the result. All right, how about uh, separability? Now also we can prove separability using induction. So we are in the straight, avoiding some cases which don't satisfy separability in lower degree. And then, so assume that the, 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 the curves of antiken conics and cubics, they satisfy, they are separable family of the Then let them be a dominant component. Then we can prove that M parameter is separable family of curves. Okay. And then, so this also uh, based on bend and break and the uh, inductive proof. But uh, since now I don't have much time, so let me skip that. So let me skip the proof. All right, so now I'm going to prove the geometric Mann's conjecture. That means that the irreducibility of moduli space. To do this, we need to prove the following lemma. So let M, MBR, this is the closure of locus in M bar 0, 0 S, parameterized and genetically, uh, parameter genetically violation of maps with irreducible domains. And then let S be a smooth triple surface of a degree D defined about K, beta be the, uh, the integral class. And assume that this uh, uh, anti kinetic degree is greater than or equal to three, then I assume this assumption P is greater than delta D, which I introduced before. And then also assume this when D is equal to two, this is S is not sitting in the same amount of separability. Now let's fix like a Q E minus two general points, Q1 to Q E minus two. And let B be the locus in this space. Parameter and stable maps whose image pass through these e minus two general points. Then b is of dimension one, and in a smooth locus of a moduli space. Moreover, there are only finite many maps in b have which have reduced domain. So you can prove it, and proof is by induction e. So I'm not give a proof, but induction e by by bend and break. And the base case is settled by Serum using Ito Ito Rike. So this is the place where we, do, we use Ito Ito Rike. Now, using, assuming this, we can prove the following. So let S be a derivative surface of degree D over K with the characteristic P. And let beta be the nef class or, or curve class of anti degree E greater than or equal to three. And then assume that P is greater than or equal to delta D. And then also when D is equal to two, S is not listed in the same amount of separability. Then this space is irreducible or empty. So you can prove this. And a proof is like a specialization argument. So we lift everything to cascade zero. And then using a specialization argument combined with the tester, we conclude that B in the previous lemma is connected. So in case zero, this B is connected by tester. It's essentially follow from tester. And then by using specialization argument, B in case special fiber is also connected. But then lemma says that this is in the smooth locus of a moduli space. So, so from this one can conclude that moduli space is reducible. So what this means is like, a, if there are two components, for example, like a bunch of components, and each component contributes to B, but B has to be connected. So some component must meet in B, but then that like a, I mean, co co common point of a two component in B has to be singular point, but I prove that we prove that B is in the smooth rows. So all together, there has to be only one component. Okay. So that's the proof. Yeah, so then uh, also, so, Tester only prove like a, this uh, result for when D is equal to one, uh, when D is equal to one, he prove uh, this reducibility for general repair surface of degree one. But we also use this like a similar specialization argument to prove that uh, to deduce uh, uh, all smooth repair surface over degree one from general smooth the surface of the degree one. So we kind of embedded some kind of, some kind of specialization argument, which works in this setting. Yeah, anyway. All right. 
Now, so now ongoing investigations. Right now, we are still working on some programs. So let me explain that. Up to now, we observe the following theorem. So let this be a weak surface surface over K. Then there's a dominant component, that of S, whose dimension is higher than expected dimension, if and only if there's a breaking map. Okay. So we essentially prove this. We, we, we have to do some minor checking, but essentially we have this theorem that I'm confident. And then uh, can we prove, but what we like to prove is that all the pathological family of rational guy with the dimension higher than expected dimension factor through breaking map up to base change of the family. So this is exactly what we like to prove. And then we are not quite proving that. And then, like the last two weeks, we realized how to prove using like a foliation theory and then like a correspondence between foliation and the inseparable cover, purely inseparable cover. So we might be able to prove this uh, in the future. Uh, but uh, so question or main question is like existence of foliation. We need to cook. I mean, if we, if we have a breaking map, that implies existence of foliation. But actually, we have existence of foliation without having breaking map is kind of yeah, not easy. Yeah. All right. Then, then my, maybe let me ask some question for the like Arisbeck geometers. So equation for Cassini and Tanaka's example has been obtained by Kawakami and Nagaoka. So oh, well, okay, this should be expressed. So anti model. So it's given by this equation. It's rather simple, right? I mean, it's a naive looking uh, point. Can we count rational points on S over function field after removing synthesis? Well, maybe this is too hard, but at least can we ask, can we compute the like universal tosa for S? I mean, yeah, this has like a seven A1 singularity. So I don't know how this helps or not. But anyway, I thought this is a kind of nice to work out. All right. It's kind of early, but anyway, let me say, stop here. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, so let's.